Welcome, listeners, to this episode of Listen, Christy. I'm Liz. Christy. And today with us, we have a very special guest, which he actually did us a solid and was one of our first guests. But I, I will go ahead and admit that we had some technical difficulties. His episode got, you know, segued. But I'm so, so excited that it did because I now am the recipient of an amazing uh, masterpiece that you handcrafted. And I couldn't tell you, I, I couldn't love anything more, quite honestly. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad it made it there safely. I can't believe you um, even said you had to gorilla glue something on. <laughs> There was a lot happening. Yeah, there was it, not your fault. I mean, it's, it was, it was someone else's know, fault. I'm somebody sure. else's fault. But no, it's um, I want to go over it in a little bit and talk about it. But just do me a favor and tell tell the listeners like what your art is and how you kind of got started. Okay, um, my name's Jason Masir, and <clears throat> excuse me, I'm primarily a pop artist. I do a lot of um, portraits, celebrity portraits. And the fun thing is to get people to send me their junk and I'll make a portrait out of their actual garbage or keepsakes. Um, so that's sort of the thrill of um, what I do. And how old were you when you decided like, hey, I can make somebody's junk beautiful? Oh, how old? Well, I first started making little macaroni pieces when I was in kindergarten. So I did have a little knack for the gluing stuff together. And I always drew um, in high school and whatever, you know, pencil drawings. And um, and then later in life, I just kept practicing the mosaic. Um, I really wanted to combine um, the craft um, with a celebrity angle um, or a personal angle. Sometimes it's just, um, it doesn't mean it's a celebrity, but you just match a person with their theme um, their color scheme, uh, hobby, interest, um, and it's fun just to put it all together and um, see what it comes out like. Now, I have to say that the way that you just described that to me feels almost like a little bit of a psychic reading when it comes to creating an art piece for somebody because as soon as I stood in front of it and started inspecting it, I was literally the smallest details shook me like everything the rind there were cats all over it and you know like the the one you know dangling tassel is just such uh, a it was like a pasty uh, wasn't yeah. it and uh even the top of the ice cream container where it said vanilla I like vanilla ice cream is my favorite flavor <laughs> but so many things like that i love um seahorses and that vintage seahorse comb and oh. uh, uh there was a uh, Sonia Raquel uh, fragrance. That's actually one of the first fragrances I fell in love with, with a, as a little girl. Um, oh. And so I did. I felt like you, you knew me without knowing me. And That's what she said. How often did you collaborate with Jason on this? And I was like, I don't, never. I just uh -huh. send Jason stuff. And well, it he, helped. it's his yeah, genius it that puts it all together. It helped because um, first you, you got a box of all your makeup and stuff together. Yeah. So then um, I'll play off of that, like right away, you know, that those things will be incorporated. Then I'm looking at pictures of you and um, it, it just all has to fit together. Like I can see your colors just by looking at your Instagram, like colors you wear or like you wear different lipstick, but you also are kind of known for like red lipstick, even with pink. I mean, this is my own, like you say, yeah. a interpretation where I just kind of hyper analyze what I can get out of you, even if I don't know you very well. Um, and then it has to boil down to what I have also, cause I have bins and bins of collections. So I'll pull out everything, like everything that was gold, I pulled out just to go with the gold hair or, um, or just whatever kind of theme and um, try to, even if it, I either sort of pretend it's yours, like I just pretend I'm going through your house, basically. But <laughs> even if it's not 100% accurate, you could, it could be like, well, that reminds me of this one night or, you know, something. Else. We'll, we'll have to put you in touch with tomorrow's guest, who's going to, he, he's the author of I Sell Dead People Things. Yes. Right? I Sell oh, pe oh, Dead oh. People's <laughs> Things. <laughs> you can do a lot with that collection. Yeah. I, I've um, tried, actually. There, um, there was certain people like, I was a big Carol Channing fan, 
and mm-hmm. I knew her agent at the time. And um, after she, I've already bugged people, you know, I want their junk, I'll do their portrait. I, you know, I, I go through this list of anybody I can meet. Um, and I could not believe he didn't do anything. But then uh, when I called him back when she passed away, I said, this would be the time, you know, if there's just junk that, um, you know, I don't want her personal, like her best stuff, but the stuff that you would hit, that just hit a dumpster to go well, to some right. dumpster. I would think said, the same. Oh, oh, I just dumped boxes and boxes of lashes in the dumpster they had last week. I was just what? like, you idiot. But, um, well, that's a sad one, but in, I still did a good portrait of her, but it wasn't, it didn't have her junk in it. What about Betty White? Did you ever do one on Betty White? I did one of Betty... Uh, Yes, I did one of her, but hers was out of Red Vines Licorice. I should pull up your I book right here that I have. Right. <laughs> that all and she Leslie ate Jordan. Hot dogs and licorice. Um, all she ate was her, hot dogs and licorice? That was her key to old age. Everybody oh, really? knew she only she wanted hot dogs and licorice. Oh, there she is right there. So it was sort of a um, present for her. Next from Red to Vines. RuPaul. I mean, just even the honor of all the people that to know you've done and that there's one in our living room is just. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's a good page. You can see the people who um, received their portraits and stuff. Now, do you ever get like writer artist block? Like, is it sometimes harder for you to complete one than you thought it was going to be or? Uh, this is true. Usually if I'm smart and I have my head on when I'm working good, I would do the hardest part first, which would be the eyes, nose, mouth, the make sure the whole face is perfect. And then as it goes on, it feels more free. Like, you know, the background's more fun. I'm just filling in. Um, But sometimes I feel really lazy and I'm like, my thought is, well, as long as I'm working, I'm doing something. So sometimes I do all the easiest part first because I just want to be doodly. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, I'm like, okay, now you got to really get it together and focus. What's your favorite part to do? Well, the, the satisfaction is um, when you see like your face look came out really good, your teeth, your smile. I, I'm really happy with how like just your mouth came out. And I was it's, like, it's dead on. It's and it's like some people like yours was like, that's the hardest mouth because you have every teeth, um, lipstick, you know, some it's like um, some people, their mouths close maybe and they don't even have much of an expression. So um I would say a nice face like yours is more challenging because <laughs> also you don't want it to look ugly. <laughs> uh, if you're doing something like an octopus. This is, this is a really good segue <laughs> into this short I posted yesterday on YouTube. And it was about authenticity. And oh, I just lost it. <laughs> I'm here. Okay. So it's this really great segue into this um comment that Shan and I were talking about authenticity and you know maybe you've got Shan is our other best friend and you've got you know body image issues and so you know you have to learn to love yourself and so this person says yeah says the lady with a half a billion dollar face <laughs> I was uh, like that's maybe supposed to be hateful but thank you <laughs> I, was, like, I don't know about that <laughs> okay but when you do something like I'm flipping through here when you do a Carol Channing or a RuPaul or a Tammy Faye um, Baker, yeah, I mean they're already extra. So exactly. when you you have to bring your beyond an A game because you're like, okay, it's nothing for them because that's kind of they're walking around, they're kind of outlandish all the time. Exactly. So what do you do versus, let's say, when you just have an Alyssa? Justin you Alyssa. Know. She Justin just Alyssa. Just a supermodel, one of nice. Charlie's in. If you're Justin Alyssa, you get nice <laughs> with a half a billion skin. dollar face. Yeah. With a half a million dollar face. You get nice skin tone. You get pretty complexion. Um people like uh Tammy Faye or there's certain people that when they're so outrageous, for me it just gives me more freedom. Like you're saying, it's like she already looks like that. So well, I can make her green or blue or I can do whatever right. I want. I'm not really afraid of color. I, I actually prefer if I could think of something 
that matches. It's like, um, I don't know, just mixing up with color. Um, but it's true. RuPaul had to look um, attractive. RuPaul's is closer to Lissa's. Right. You, you want the nice skin tone. And other people's, I could make your but whole... Willie Nelson, you did him with like uh, nuts and bolts. Right. And his whole face was like a piece of wood and then um, some pine cones. And so each each person, um, you know, reflects that person's personality and interests. Um like there's one example, um, Snoop Dogg. It's a small right. piece just made out of weed. It's joints, you know, seed. Now, how do you acquire the weed to make the photo? <laughs> um, basically, I just... asked all my friends, just save your your ashtray mess for me. <laughs> and I, or I would roll up some, you know, the background has a little joint, so I would roll up. Um, now, has he seen this? Does he have his? He does not have his, but it was at an art show in LA. He he commented, he liked it, and he posted it. And he so he's seen it and liked it, but somebody else bought it. Now, has that anybody ever been mad? Mary Louise Parker. Um, mm -hmm. she sent me her junk, and I was really happy with her portrait too. But it was right when Weeds was big, the show she was mm -hmm. on. I mean, it was on for like eight seasons, and I incorporated that character into it. You know, there's there's she has pot earrings and but it's it's still her but she said something like well I have kids and I don't want to see this in my house or something but it's like well it's your hit tv show I mean I don't know right so I think some people I don't think she probably would just say it's just I didn't like it or something but I was proud of it and it was with her sure junk. It is. but other oh, yeah other it's outstanding people, thank you no see some yeah. people are like you said, they're hyper secure about their image or in general, I try to be flattering. I don't make anybody look worse. You know, I no, I, I just I try to make them look as good as I can. Well, like you said, taking what would probably end up in otherwise in a dumpster. It, it's nothing I look at. Think, God, I think that would be more impactful in a drawer somewhere or no, take it and make it this amazing piece of art that, like I said to you the other day, I've probably stared at it at least uh -huh. 20 hours but that's me too. like the artist in me just appreciating so much because christy we were talking about what what is art and you know of course we all know it's subjective. subjective we get that but there's a certain process and i'm always astounded by these instant artists that are kind of popping up because they're portraying the act of making the art mm -hmm. on social media while they do it and it it takes off or it goes viral and now they're charging sixty thousand dollars for a splash oh, piece, lovely. which it's like, that's amazing for them. I'm not degrading it or whatever, but it's just such a different process than what you do. And for me personally, I have so much appreciation for that aspect of your creative abilities that I, I think everybody should know your name and have oh, a piece in your in their home. And um, thank you. Are, do you have like this, this wish list of all the people that you're waiting to do? Like, do you have... Well, there was a time when my when I was working on my book, I, I was really focused on that. Um, like, I've sort of slowed down. I can still think of a wish list, but a lot of the interaction and trying to get someone to do something for you, it, it kind of all goes south a little bit. It, celebrities have big egos. They're used to stuff giving, getting, you know, free gifts all the time. So it always ends up sticky. Like, are you going to buy this from me or why don't I? So who are a few you? people on your wish list? Um, like made out of their junk. Oh, how about right. Beyonce? <laughs> you guys. <laughs> <laughs> let's hear. Let's hear Cowboy it. Carter. Do you love her new country song? I'm here for it. I got to tell I you. Do. I like the album and um, I'm, I, I like it. I just brought that up because you guys are in Texas. Yeah, there's been all, it's so funny because we just watched this thing last night about the Kardashians wearing cowboy hats on the beach right. because like all these artists are jelly rolls paving the way for everybody to say, you know what? Country music's cool, everybody. <laughs> now, now Beyonce is coming. So yeah, okay, we'll make this. Anyway, um, who, I don't know. I kind of at the time, I, I like whoever's like at the time, uh, like I did Cardi B, but I wasn't with her junk. Sort of whoever's just... I don't know. 
I like whoever's making a big splash or people who have really strong personalities. Or We should look. commission a piece for Bunny. Get out of my head. <laughs> Bunny? Okay. Bunny and Jelly Roll. Yeah. I said we should commission a piece for Bunny. I don't know. Um, wish lips. There's strange people, like I want to say Shelly Duvall, and um, there's certain people that I just have loved as as an actor, and they're still alive. But it, it's not so much, um, I don't know. Some I bet you've done Dolly. I have, See, if, if I could do it out of Dolly's stuff, see, that right. would, I do. And what about your favorites? My favorites are the people that you kind of hinted towards of um, – more cartoony people, like um, we said Tammy Faye, but like Pamela Anderson, um, people who have like just a whole built-in everything. Well, you did looked. you did Kevin Bacon, Made Out of Bacon? Yes, that one. Um, so that one I had to just set it up in the kitchen. I, I bought about 30 pounds of bacon. <laughs> I, I fried all that stupid bacon <laughs> myself. I got, I got, <laughs> un, I got a hate email from someone from PETA so I can't <laughs> call you ever again um, why because that's a big it was waste, a waste of big waste of bacon I suppose uh, okay but anyway so it was fun because I had to set it up on the kitchen table and then they just put a camera over the top took a picture and then there was literally like ants were going to come in the house at some point and I just put it all in a trash bag and threw it away so it was just for one day in that picture. But that's kind of exciting to do that kind of thing, too. Um, but how do you get that layer it to get the depths? The, with the bacon, I left some raw for like a light tone. And then I just kind of cooked it all different le levels all the way to burnt. So there was like a little sort of variation. Please tell um, me that there are times that you look at yourself after you've completed. Sometimes you have to surprise yourself and say, dang, I'm good. I do sometimes. <laughs> it's okay. Usually, it's just us. You can have no, a moment. Um, usually you what should be. Is, well, it, it, um, what the hard part is, is if you work on something so long and then it's like, okay, now I'm going to stand it up and see what I really think. And then sometimes it's just, oh, it's perfect. Thank God. I don't have to touch it. Um, so that's a real satisfaction. But sometimes you look it up. I call it, you know, last looks. And then I'm fussing with things. And then sometimes people's need so much work that I didn't anticipate. It's like, I would say yours looked, when I stood it up, the only thing I noticed mostly was one side of the hair was had more white and blonde. And I kind of wanted to even it out. Like this other side didn't, didn't balance. But I, but the face already looked good because I, I already knew that. Uh, yours worked out pretty well. The background Pretty much was just solid. It was mostly black. Um, I just set it in front of. Yeah. See, like somebody just gave me that big seahorse. Only like I, I was already working on your piece, and that some of my friends they know me and they'll give me their special things. And I really, I really like the combination of your like your lip color with like your shirts, kind of the, a whole different shade of pinky purple. I just like the color combination. I, I feel like it's uniquely you. It's like, where's Waldo but fun, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, um, you could pick out all the, most of all that makeup on there was yours. Um, right. Well, and even like the matchbooks that you put in there from all the different casinos, like it's, it's just has that vintage throwback feel that, I mean, I can't imagine anybody being upset about receiving a gift of one of these. No, it's... I'm it's, looking at a picture of it behind the screen so that I can yeah. talk about what you guys are looking at in front of me. But And the lashes, uh, I'm really impressed with. The now, do you start doing the center first or do you work on the outside and go in? Um, I'll outline the whole thing on the board. So I'll see each part. There'll be the hair, the back, black brown, the face. But then um, yours, I'll, I'll give you a picture. Um, there's a picture of just your face when I finished it. But it's not attached to anything. So it's funny. You can just. Free floating. Head. Yeah. Free floating head. So no, I did the head, the face, head and face first. It's just like everything. It's almost like um, a Lego uh, masterpiece that everything has a place that it fits. 
th 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 thank you. <laughs> That's part of the hard part is because say I have everything laid out in colors, um, but then you also have to find the right shape, the right size, and then the height. Because some, like if it's a record, it's totally flat, but then if it can't be sitting right next to a hairbrush or something. So you have to kind of build some things up to the level of other things. Right. So it's now, sort of what, like a jigsaw puzzle, but then has a, also a 3D element to it. You have now, to what put, are these pieces you have hanging up behind you? I think I spot Julie Newmar. Oh, okay. Yeah, this uh, this is one here, yes. Um, Julie Newmar. That's She's similar so to your, fabulous. That's all her makeup. Um, so that that's a cool piece. I have a nice picture of her with that and a pillow. I made a pillows out of it for her. Oh, look at Cardi B. Cardi B. So that one I made a, quite a while when um, the WAP video came out and everybody was it stuck at home during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just made that for my own fun inspiration. Oh, so like uh, you're saying, I have a couple pieces on hand still, but most of my stuff has been either commissioned directly or sold. So I, I pretty much have no backup art in my house. But I, that's I a, like it that's that. a great problem to have. Yes. I know. <laughs> I'd rather I'm... I like to make it and I'm not I don't feel satisfied until it's a, all the way finished nicely and I can look at it and I know that picture I could print a billboard if I need to. And then I feel like it's done. And then I don't care what happens. I, I, I'd prefer it to just go away. Are most, there any mostly. that you wish you could have back? Not really. What what I'd like to do is have, I was saying earlier, I would think Beverly Hills would be the best place, but to have a gallery, a big gallery show and say, I do a few new people um, that would come out to the opening in Beverly Hills. I'm even thinking like Lisa Rinna or I don't know who, but just someone who's willing, fun, or how, whoever I can wrangle up. Nikki. You know people, I'm sure. Yes. Yes. <laughs> our girlfriend, friends. our girlfriend, Nikki Haskell. This is perfect. Um, something I would really like to do, say, in L.A., probably Beverly Hills somewhere, is have a big art opening. Um, I could have all my art pieces that I love all brought down um, or shipped out and then have some Beverly Hills people um, participate. So people I know, I was think, thinking like Lisa Rinna or somebody fun. So I'm trying to think gear towards that. And and what I, I would like one whole big thing where maybe it's a documentary making, you know, those last pieces, the opening could be part of it. That would be the big hurrah would be an opening. It would start maybe, you know, like people give me their junk. I'm working on pieces towards this show. Anyways, it's been pitched before. It's not the first time, but um, I, I. But it's just so unique. I think. I would like to do something like that. And then maybe I have a new book that's just the trash pieces. Because um, I have a When probably... does it come out? No, that's what I'd like to come have. Oh. Um, now, do but... you have somebody professionally come in and photograph each one as you're finished with it? Each piece? I used to do that. I can honestly do it now myself. Um, fine. But yeah, I used to have somebody come over. Or I'd have to take it to an art studio. In the old days, I'd have to put it in my car, drive it to an art studio, leave it there overnight, then go back, pick up the film, go <laughs> develop it. Um, and now- Didn't I, that seem I, like last month? I know. And then I, I did a test because I had a, my photographer move to Hawaii and I was like, I can't live without him. He does everything for me. And then I did a test with my camera, just trying the best I could do. And I thought, this looks the same. It actually does. So if I have a real important job, um, I would have someone come do it probably. Now, have you ever had any disasters? Like you finished a piece and it got completely ruined or? Um, I've had plenty of disasters. Yeah. One show. Okay. Um, it was back in Melrose Place days. I did the whole cast of Melrose Place. It was my, I was going to explode. It was so popular at the time. And I brought them all to the gallery early because I was just thought I was efficient. So they were there like a week early. And then um, come to find rats, mice just went and like chewed up all the bottoms of them all. <gasps> like they didn't have them covered or they just got eaten. Right <laughs> before my show. 
So I'm I sure they go, still sold. I had to fix them last minute, but I've had plenty of disasters. Like, oh, you couldn't yeah. even Here's make that up. up. No. You can't make it up, no. Oh, this was funny. I, I had a piece. It was Helen Gurley Brown. And then um, it was my early junk pieces. And then I got a call from the gallery and they said, Jason, there's something brown leaking from Helen Gurley Brown. <laughs> it was like a put a can of pudding or something. Because in the old days, I just would glue things on. I, um, I should have <laughs> opened it, cleaned it, you know. But so I, I <laughs> so she's oozing. Yeah, it was. I had to go. It was like dripping down the wall. Something I glued on. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to be careful now. Um, I, like there was weevils in a box. I have to open the packages, empty them. Just be more careful. What's a weevil? A weevil is like Ooh. a little. It's like a little gnat. A weevil. Um... It's like ew, like a bug. <laughs> They're like little bugs. Be... They get in the flower. They get in weevils. They... I can't believe you like used your, a whole open, pudding pack. <laughs> if you open the box of macaroni and cheese and it's too old and there's a little black bug in there. Bug in there. They look like fleas. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, and ants. I've had ants come into my house um, just because I had candy stored. Um, I am just blown away like where you live. The madness that you say, okay, I'm looking for this certain Pantone of pink. And I can imagine you have drawers that are color coordinated. Yes. And that you just, okay, we're doing blonde hair. So let me get into my, you know, highlighter yellow drawer. I do. Is that is literally how it works? Yeah. I have a drawer just like that for hair. It almost made it onto Lissa's. But the yellow, um, I just thought it was one too many colors to start adding. But I, it, just what you said, like highlighters, little corn cobbers, you know. Um, that yeah, there's a little pile of like yellow hair highlights. You got now. Are you ever? Are you ever at a lack of stuff, or do people send you stuff like nonstop? Um, combination. My friends, uh, what I like is my friends, I have a couple girlfriends with my, I don't want to say with money, but they buy nice things. So they give me their um, like old makeup and phones and things that would be really expensive. So I like to have those to glue on rather than just trash. Um, but the, th um, the thing I always run out of, what drives me crazy is I'll just be looking for like two buttons. It's like, I just want two buttons for eyes and two like sequins for a mm -hmm. highlight and i'll i won't have it in all my thousands of things it's like i can't find a button and so sometimes so how I, do you go out and procure an emergency button <laughs> uh, i mean uber a, doesn't do, you know what do you <laughs> there's a store called scrap it's just sort of a junk junk shop so if i i can make a trip but part of my goal is not to go buy things it's like the part of the uh, fun is to have to use what's there but it's just funny or i'll run i won't have a pencil it's like out of all the things or i can't find just a black sharpie that works it's usually like kind of something that i want like every time i use a black sharpie i lose the lid and then it dries out <laughs> so I, I could have an endless supply of sharpies i won't ever throw away anything again now no, that, that's what I'm thinking is like, how many junk drawers do I know he would greatly benefit from? Right. Like so I can guys, think of it. Yeah, like, you guys would have nice stuff. Yeah. Okay. Time to clean out a junk drawer. <laughs> yes. You know, it's funny that he's saying that because I'm sitting here thinking to myself, do I think I could get Deidre Hall to give up a whole box of her junk? Because <laughs> I would love to have you do one of Deidre Hall. Yes, you can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'll, let her, I tell I'll let her know. Even a shoebox full. You, I try to make it fun. Like if it's not fun, have your assistant just send me something so you say that there's something in there. But some people think it's fun and they're literally going, how much do you want? I, how much? How much? <laughs> so I, I never would say no. I wouldn't say that's too much. So for anybody that wants to, to buy a commission piece, how do they find you? How do they reach you? Okay. So I'm on Instagram um, at Jason Masir. And then I have my website. It's spell Monsieur. 
Messier, M-E-C-I-E-R. My website is thejasonmessier.com. Um, and then the pillows and I have maybe um, clothing and some other things on the website at yourpillowguyswebsite.com. That was brilliant. And then there's also a Your Pillow Guy video that everyone's required to watch first. <laughs> <laughs> so that's on the website or YouTube, but I'm very proud of it. My singing, dancing. Anyways. <laughs> What's your best piece of advice for a young up and coming artist? Technically, really, you have to just follow yourself. If you start, if you start following anyone's other lead, it's not going to work. You have to follow your gut. I would say you have to be persistent and not give up. But I remember Paula Abdul said that like 40 years ago. That was her advice to me. You just keep going. You just keep going. If you give up, it's not going to happen, which is true. If you give up, it can't happen. But you could also spend your whole life trying. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you give up, it's definitely not going to happen. And I think find something unique that you do to set yourself apart from other people, um, make it a little easier, maybe. Well, I just think you're absolutely brilliant. I've been a fan of yours for so long and you you've too. commissioned now a couple of you've done different. A, I've done a few for you. I know. Thank yes. you. And for my friends. And it's just always whenever somebody opens it up for the first time in front of people, I love that initial, oh my God, when people are just so blown away because it's beautiful in a portrait, but seeing it up close and the intricate work that you put into it, it's just, it's unbelievable. You just have to see your work in person. Thank you. I know you get in one way they can look good photographed and printed, but you'll never understand the dimension that way. Right. If they could stick out three or four inches even. Yeah. It's fabulous. All right. Well, well thank well, you, Jason. Thanks, yeah. Jason. Say You're good night, Lucy. Good night, Lucy. Mm -hmm.